are now veterans of Bomber Command from across the country came to Lincoln today for the launch of a memorial dedicated to those air crews who lost their lives in the Second World War. Now numbering only a few hundred, it was an emotional day, not just for them, but for their friends and family and serving military personnel who attended. Adam Fowler was there to capture a day of reflection and a day of pride. Two Tornado GR4s tore through the sky, pierced now as well by a steel spire 102 feet tall, the same as the wingspan of a Lancaster bomber. It's there to remember World War II air crews. Surrounding it, the wall of names, 26,000 of them. All of them lost their lives for their country. Of those members of Bomber Command who survived today, around 300 attended the launch. They brought family. They searched for friends. He was my radio operator and he flew two operations. And there is any number of men along there who um, flew the three, four, five, maybe other one or two. But I owe my life to him. The average age of those commemorated here was 19. Vic Farmer, a navigator, was 18 when he signed up, 20 when he flew. He's 92 now. I think it's amazingly uplifting as the last person of my crew still alive to th I can, they would love to have known it sort of pushes, lifts you upwards. I'm very impressed with that. The veterans I've spoken to today say their overwhelming emotion when they see this is pride, but it's mixed with sadness as well. It's taken so long to recognise these names that many of those who survived the war didn't survive long enough to see the memorial. Construction started in February this year. The spire itself is taller than the Angel of the North. It was made by a company from North Yorkshire and its length meant it had to be escorted to Lincoln by police escort. Even though it was officially unveiled today, it's only the first phase of a bigger project. More walls will be built with the names of all Bomber Command air crew and there'll be a memorial park, peace gardens, amphitheatre and digital archive once funds are secured. Strike hard, strike sure, sang a male voice choir. That was the motto of RAF Bomber Command. Children laid flowers in memory of the fallen. And as the event closed with a Vulcan fly past, a memorial that took generations to be built now stands for generations to come. Adam Fowler, ITV News. Serving in Bomber Command was one of the most deadly roles during the Second World War. Of the 125,000 who signed up, almost half were killed in action. Today, all of those men were remembered as a new memorial was unveiled in Lincoln. A special service was held at the site on Cannock Hill earlier today, featuring several flypaths, including the Dakota and the Vulcan. Gemma Dawson sent this report. This is the memorial spire. It was moved into position here on Cannock Hill earlier this year and today it was officially unveiled. Now earlier one of the veterans said to me that he believes it's a fitting tribute to those who died serving with Bomber Command. Now at the moment 26,000 of their names appear on the walls here. Eventually in total there'll be more than 55,000 names on this memorial. Now earlier there was a service here in what's believed to be the biggest gathering of Bomber Command servicemen since the Second World War. More than 300 veterans and invited guests gathered here at the base of the spire this morning for its official opening. It's at last something which records the sacrifices that those 55,573 made. It had to happen in Lincolnshire and the Bomber County, but this is a place that um, they, they, they've come back to, at least in memory. 
The spire at the top of Cannock Hill looks out across Lincolnshire. From here, thousands of air crews set off during the Second World War. Each flight of fighters takes its appointed place in the convoy, swooping into position until at zero hour the officer in command of the force sets course and the whole formation flies to its target. In total, 125,000 men served in Bomber Command, with more than 55,000 paying the ultimate price. People in Bomber Command, it was an incredibly dangerous job. 70% of them were killed, wounded or captured during World War II. That's an astonishing high number. You're much more likely not to come home than to, than to come home, or not to come home wounded. This morning, I met veteran Les Rutherford, here to find the names of the friends he lost. Some of them were the crew that I was shot down with because uh, there were only two who survived. We were attacked by a night fighter, and at the third attack we were blazing pretty well, and the pilot gave the order to abandon, and as he did so, the aircraft blew up. All of the veterans at today's service have stories to tell. Today, the sacrifice of Bomber Command remembered. We've spent a lot of time working with the veterans and knowing how important this is for them. So over 300 here today. Our youngest is 91, the oldest is 103, and they've travelled from all over the world. Oh, really? Um, that's how important this is to them. The familiar sound of the Vulcan, the finale of today's service on one of her final flights, and what's expected to be one of the final gatherings of Bomber Command veterans. Well, as you can see, work is still ongoing here, as well as the extra names that still need to be added to the memorial. There's also plans for two peace gardens and a memorial centre. Now, fundraising is still ongoing at the moment, but it's hoped it could all be finished by mid-2017. Gemma Dawson, BBC Look North, at the Bomber Command Memorial.